Hi there guys, welcome to another Rogues video. Today it's Jordan here, talking about my deck profile with Vicavolt. Now, this is the deck that I took with me down to Team Challenge in Athena, in Norwich. And I managed to win five games out of six, taking me through and now qualifying for Athena Team Challenge. A couple of spicy takes in here that a lot of other people don't play that I've seen. Um, we'll go through that as we go along and we'll see what we've got. So, starting off, obviously you've got your main attacker, Vicar Vault. I play a three of, I don't think any more than that's needed because you do play recovery. And also if they take three knockouts with these, they've taken six prize cards for the game. So definitely just stick with three Vicar Vault. I think that's your best option. And I definitely think that with the way I've been playing consistency wise, I always hit it turn one. And if I go seconds, I've always got a way to get it into the active and to hit that turn one item lock. So yeah, free Vicar Vault. Next up for me, and one of the main cards in this deck, Baby Zapdos. Now, I was against these cards to begin with. I didn't think these were any good, but my God, do they make the numbers matter. <laughs> yeah, these have helped me out in so many games, hitting these turn one, double these, getting the comfy into the active against Lost Box and knocking it out turn one with item lock just seals some games straight off the bat and that's just an amazing card looking forward obviously these will disappear because these will go into the regilecki v maxes um just more damage output more plus 30 plus for your basic po electric pokemon just going to make vicavot even more heavy to hit so it's going to be really good next up i have one of my tech cards i know a lot of people play a two of the drapion v um i only play a one uh, just because our meta in our local area just doesn't need to drape on so there's not a lot of me about it. everyone's scared of it because of this card so we only run a one of and then of course i play the drape on v star as well um this v star ability just makes it absolutely insane against the bigger two prizes and three prizes giving you that turn where you can stick them in the active um and just keep going and just keep hitting them into them with item lock and poison them until they can try and somehow get a retreat out by manual retreating after the paralysis. Normally by that point you're knocking them out so it doesn't really matter, but this is definitely good. There's a tech card in later on that you'll see that I've put in that makes this even better um, because it doesn't leave it stuck onto the bench, meaning you can actually not worry about getting boss stalled because of this card having a free retreat cost. But definitely love this card. I would include a second drape on if I think I needed to. I definitely think I can find space for it, but at the moment, it just isn't needed. So yeah, 1-1 one, one Drake online. Next up, you've got your consistency cards. Crowbat and Luminion. Luminion, for me, is an absolute godsend. Obviously, that turn one going second Melanie play, definitely needed. And this card has done that for me nine times out of ten if I've needed it. A lot of times I open up Melanie and it's just like, oh, okay, this deck just doesn't want to stop. But this is definitely there for needed. And also, I'm quite a turbo player. So having the choice of a Crobat, being able to go ultra ball for a Crobat, bin my hand down to hit them cards that I need. Turn one, going second. It's definitely good. Both of these have literally given me outs every single time, turn one. Obviously, the main threat with these two and the main problem is they're both abilities, which means Path to the Peak has definitely hit me a few times going first, um, especially against Reggie's. But we get in there and we get out of the path. We play three stadiums of our own. We try and hit that stadium turn one anyway and then get ourselves moving. So yeah, these are definitely two consistency cards that are really good. Now on to my one-off cards that I run in here. Just the two of them. Obviously, you expect the Greninja. You play Water Energy in this deck with the Men in the Engine, as we'll go through later. Just perfect consistency card to be able to bin that Water Energy for the Melanie and also to draw two cards to get that final piece that you need for the turn one item lot. I absolutely love that card. And then this. Now, this was a nice little tech that I added in. Um, I believe this is a great card purely on the fact of Reggie's. Literally, Reggie's. We hit 60, maybe 70 per turn with Paralyzing Bolt. Obviously, Reggie's has 130, so if we can only get one Zapdos out, we can hit it for 60 an item lock. 60 an item lock. Ping it for the 10 the following turn, meaning we don't have to attack to knock it out, and that gives us another attack it into the next one. Obviously coming into the later game, if we can attack them with a 190 on the Vicar Vault, then we means we take two knockouts on Regis. They have to find two Regis to try and come back with the ability. So this has been key for me in many matchups and I've loved it. And it's just helped out so much as well. There's one other card that we'll see later on, 
that has also helped out with the Reggie matchup. You'll see what it is in a minute. You'll know as soon as I play it, but that's why. So yeah, that's our Pokemon lineup, guys. It's nice and straightforward and simple. It's literally the bog stand setup plus the addition of the Zigzagoon. Moving on to supporters now. First and main supporter, obviously. Melanie. <laughs> this card is just, it always comes out. Melanie loves me, I think, because every time I play this card, every time it's there, I always have it, and it's just, it's perfect. Like, draw free, attach your water energy, I mean, you attach your speed energy for turn onto the Vicar Vault. It's just absolutely perfect. It, just the consistency of it, the fact that I always hit it, and like I say, you've also got the Luminion to hit it as well. It's perfect. Next up on supporters, boss's orders. Again, this is there so that you can target down stuff with the Drapion V star if you're worried. You can also stick stuff in the active for turns or playing against Lost Box, for example, you just target down the Confies early on, the Crown Rents early on to get them out of the way so they can't build their engine. Absolutely perfect. Now, I play two Marnie. I was originally against this. And again, it wasn't until I started playing more Lost Box and Reggies that I realized if you can disrupt their hand with item lock on the turn you release it, say for using the big attack on Vicar Vault here, or if you have to whiff a turn because you can't find the item lock, this is the perfect support to play. It just allows you to get that hand down to four cards, get rid of all their items they've stored up in their hand, and get them to be able to go, okay, I need to now dig through my deck to find the cards that I need. So yeah, that's absolutely spot on for me. I think having two of those there is amazing. I don't think there's any other support. Some people decided to tell me to play Roxanne, and I think, to be honest, Roxanne relies too much on late game. And by that point, if your opponent hasn't scooped already because they're too annoyed for being item blocked, you're probably far enough ahead that Roxanne doesn't matter. So definitely think that's the best play for me. Moving on to stadiums. You got your first stadium, which is Pokestop. I play a two of. Now I see a lot of decks that play Stormy Mountains. And I do see why obviously you want to find that turn one Vicar Fight, that turn one Zapdos, to try and get them into the active but I don't have a problem consistency-wise. I don't think I've ever needed to worry about getting the Vicar Vault. I've always had the Vicar Vaults out. I think the only thing is, is just worrying about getting something like Crow Battle Luminion to try and draw more. So I think Pokestop's definitely best. And also, if you discard energy off the Pokestop, it's even better for you because you can just literally melanie it back into your hand. So definitely something that's worth for me. I have absolutely love playing this Pokestop. Um, I play one more stadium, which you'll see in a minute, which is the reason why there's only two Pokestops in here. But again, I think this is absolutely amazing. So going into that third stadium, now this is my little tech card that I've put in that not a lot of people play, and that's Clap Stadium. Now, for people that don't know, Clap Stadium, when you play this card, take it down your bench to four. Both players must have a bench of four Pokemon. So if you play five Pokemon, you have to discard one. Like we said earlier, guys, it's a Reggie counter. <laughs> I face a lot of Reggies in my local area. Now this is literally a godsend. If this isn't prized and I hit this at the right time, it's absolutely perfect. It shuts down Reggie's, they're item locked, they can't find that fifth Pokemon out of their hand straight away. Playing this in combination with Marnie as well, just puts them into a situation where they can't search for the Pokemon they need. Unless they physically draw it, they're stuck for a turn. It's perfect. Also, the synergy with Drapion V-Star, like I've talked about earlier, or Crobat and Luminion. If you have a full bench, play this down, bin one of those cards, you can then use Ordinary Rod, which we do play, to put the card back into the deck if you need it for a later game. Obviously, you wouldn't so much with Drapion because you can only use the V-Star once, but definitely with the Crobat and Luminion, you most certainly can. So that's why I play that. And like I say, it's helped me in so many occasions. Moving into the items, we'll start off with just a nice simple one. Heavy Ball, self-explanatory really. It's there to make sure you can draw enough cards and also look into your prize cards to see whether you've prized certain pieces like Crobat, Vicarfold, Luminion, Drapion, or the Zapdosses, whatever you need in that matchup to be able to confirm the, what prize cards you need. So fairly simple and straightforward. Next up, obvious ones, four quick ball. I'm not gonna go through what they're in there, they're obvious. Three ultra ball. Now, I used to play four. Um, needed the space for another tech card, so I took one out. And again, it has not failed me since. 
these cards are just perfect to be able to bin them water energies off they've always got cards you can bin off and they're just absolutely perfect of getting the one piece you need for that first turn next up four scoop up net again self-explanatory with the zigzagoon the zap bosses and the greninja you're able to loop between all three i've had many times where i've scoop up net three zigzagoon pings in a turn um, to try and just put damage around to take the knockout the following two turns with the Zapdos, uh, with the Vicarol, sorry. So that's why we play four of them. Um, I would see that if I was going to drop any cards for something, it would probably be one of these. I don't think four is absolutely necessary, but it definitely does help in setting up numbers using the Crobats, uh, using the Zigzagoon, sorry. Now, for switching options, I run three switch, one escape rope. Again, this escape rope was originally in there because I was really afraid of Empoleon. Um, but if I power up quick enough before the Empoleon, not use, like obviously not being able to use my abilities, then I one shot the Empoleon anyway due to its water, uh, electric weakness. But I put the massive switching options there again because of Drapion V-Star. There was many a times where I was getting bossed up and getting stuck. The free switch and the one escape rope just helped me get out of that situation. Two choice belt. Uh, I have felt the necessary of possibly putting a third one in. But I don't think it's massively necessary. I think two choice belt will do you in the numbers in the Palkin matchup with weakness. Um, and also in like Kira Mice Riders and stuff like that. I think they're just perfect. Another card that's absolutely broken in this list. Energy Search. I play two basic electric energy as well as the two uh, as well as the water energy. This just helps guarantee that energy into hand. And because you can hit it off Pokestop and it doesn't get the card that goes straight into hand, it guarantees you an energy into hand. I just think that's absolutely perfect. Play four trekking shoes. I love my shoes. I have four gold ones that are going to be going in here soon. Um, these are just perfect for digging through to find that crucial card that you need. Two ordinary rod as the last two items. I originally only run one, and a lot of this only run one. But I think two is ideal because I think you have to be able to get back certain pieces and certain energy in the later game to keep this deck going. I think it's absolutely necessary. And then moving on to the energy. Four speed energy. Fairly straightforward and easy. I've seen a lot of decks run three and I do see why. But I think four and being able to try and hit that turn one to draw more cards is amazing. Where are we going to put these? We're going to put these. We're going to move this across. <laughs> We're going to put these down here. Like I said, two electric. Just think that for consistency wise, you have to have normal lightning energy because you can't search out this speed energy in any way. This just allows you to have a search. And then five, water energy. I've seen some of this play six, I've seen some of this play four. I play five, it's again, it's a consistency thing. I think I could drop this down to four, but also with the five, it does allow you for slower games to use Greninja, power up the Greninja, and hit with the Greninja for a double knockout later on if need be. That's my list, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And like I say, this is my Athena Team Challenge winning list now, so I'm part of Team Challenge. And um, we'll see how far we can go. This will probably be one of the main lists going into Silver Tempest for me, with obviously the additional changes of Regilecki going in there for the extra damage buff. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe if you ain't already, and we'll catch you guys soon. In a bit.